Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to talk about how to prepare for a postdoc and here I am presuming that you have obtained a postdoc and you have maybe three to six months or even a year to join this postdoc. So essentially what happens during this time is that you have some time to prepare yourself before you embark on this postdoc journey. Now, most people apply for postdocs because they want to do a few things, they want to improve their CV, they want to get some valuable skills in terms of research, they want to visit a foreign country or maybe even move to a foreign country. They may also be somebody who wants to improve their career prospects, maybe they are planning to get into faculty positions or research careers down the road and this is a journey which will be helped by their doing a good postdoc. Now, you need to think about what is the advantage of giving you the postdoc for the host. And this person essentially has given you funding or in some cases, if you have brought your own funding, he may have provided you with the space where you are going to do your research with the lab facilities and also he will have to do the paperwork at the university to essentially host your visit. Also, this person essentially would like to have something in return from you and this is often a journal paper. So I'm going to divide this video into five points. So the first point is going to be paper writing skills. And what you would like to do is that during your postdoc tenure, you want to write at least one good journal paper or a conference paper. And why this is very important for the host is that most academic keep track of their progress, the progress of their graduate students, the progress of their postdocs by the fact that they have written some papers. So later in life when they go through their curriculum vitae, they look at certain paper and they remember that, okay, this was the person who actually did the research for this work. So this is something very important as far as academia is concerned and therefore make it a point that you have good paper writing skills. So now what are some of these skills? Of course, let us just focus on the paper writing skill. We'll discuss the domain knowledge later. The fact is a paper is a compilation of words, sentences and figures and tables. And in some cases, if you are into mathematical disciplines, engineering and so on, you also have to deal with equations. Now, one thing which is going to be there in all papers is figures and tables and so you need to figure out a way to make good figures and you can do this in Microsoft Excel, you could do this in MATLAB, you could do this in some different tool also. For example, you could make use of Python and Matplotlib. Also some statistical softwares are there such as R, SPSS, you can take advantage of these also. Now you need to have some prior knowledge about what the lab is using you can actually ask some of the lab people, even the professor as to what is the software they are using to do all their paperwork and their research. And it's a good idea to know some of these things because it varies differently based on different lab. Now for word processing, you certainly need to know Microsoft Word. And if you are a person who is going to deal with equations and math, you need to know LaTeX. So these two softwares are going to be very important. If you are completely in the Microsoft Office domain. You can actually make your figures in Excel and you can import them into Microsoft Word. You can then make PowerPoint slides to make presentations. So this presents a complete framework to do your research and to present your work. This is often very suitable for social sciences and humanities domain. Now, if you are somebody in the technical field, then you will have to know MATLAB. You will have to do all your number crunching in MATLAB. Most universities will have a MATLAB license which your host may be able to get to you. But in some cases, if you don't have access to MATLAB, you may have to use Python because Python is free. It is an interpreted language. You can easily download it and you can write code in MATLAB. You can generate plots in Matplotlib and then you can import all this stuff into LaTeX. So that is another way to write papers. Now, you'll have to do a lot of calculations in many cases. These calculations deal with data. So you can do many of these calculations in Excel. Many people don't realize how much power Excel actually has. It has a lot of built-in functions. So for example, whether you want sine, cosine, hyperbolic sine, log, ln, or you are somebody interested in statistical variables such as mean, median, mode, standard deviation, all these are essentially functions into Excel. And if you spend some time learning Excel, it's going to certainly help you a lot, especially if you are in the 
social sciences domain and even in the engineering domain a lot of the work can be done in excel remember that there are a lot of investment bankers in goldman sachs and morgan stanley and some of these companies who actually use excel to do their number crunching as far as deciding which stock to buy which stock to sell and so on now of course if you are somebody in the engineering domain you will have to use matlab and python and so you need to know programming in either of these languages don't expect as a postdoc that the host is going to assign you some phd student to help you in programming you will have to do all this by yourself most of the time now of course the host may provide you with a computer but i always encourage people to take their own laptop take a reasonable level of storage device such as one terabyte or two terabyte in case they want to back up their things also take something which you can use to tie your laptop down to your desk such as a kensington lock these are all very useful because every now and then believe me in universities i have seen that some laptops have been taken away while the postdoc or phd student was wandering around getting a glass of coke or something like that so keep in mind that you should lock your laptop especially if you are given a cubicle out there in open spaces that is something which is important also finally remember to take your charger and adapter in case you are going to a country which doesn't follow the same voltage standards as your home country now let's come to number point two and this is about communication skills now of course you all know that communication skills are very important in research and this is not just the written communication skills in writing papers you also have to communicate with the host professor with the various team members and so on and you need to attend a weekly meeting most of the time so your host professor may have a weekly meeting and make sure that you take part in this meeting also ask some questions every now and then and you can learn a lot from what the other phd students are doing what the professor is himself doing and so on so actually your project is just one narrow project a lot can be learned by following the different projects which are going on in the professor's lab and this can even train you for creating a lab down the road or for becoming a professor yourself now it's important at that time to be collegial in your interaction with the different phd student do not act like a boss because you are a postdoc you are not really their boss you are kind of a mentor to them but their boss is actually the professor who has invited you so do keep this in mind do go here and there every now if the phd students invite you to go to coffee or to go for lunch that's always something which builds collegiality and sometime phd students will do a lot of free work for you if they like you so if you are having problems in terms of programming in terms of running experimental facilities in terms of the different chemicals you need for the lab in terms of gathering data all these things the phd students are somebody who is going to help you now point number 3 is about the domain knowledge and essentially now that you are a postdoc you have prescribed or you have proposed some kind of research problem so you need to be sure that you know this domain very well so it is expected that whatever field you are in you know the literature of that field quite well and also you know the basics or fundamentals of your field very well so if you are somebody who is trying to do a postdoc in a broad field of mechanics make sure that you know the basic principles of mechanics very well whether it's newton law whether it is hamilton principle whether it's lagrange equations and so on if you are somebody in social sciences make sure you know the latest buzzwords which are going on in your field such as intersectionality if you are in computer science make sure that you know all the things which are going on in terms of machine learning deep learning and so on because i'm sure your host professor would be very excited if you try to apply any of the latest deep learning theories in the problem your problem may be something else but you do need to know what is happening in the field which you are in now the fourth point is that know your advisor and this is something which is relatively easy to do from their web page so what i mean is that know the journals where they publish know the place where they have done their degree from when they have done their degree know the conferences where they go to all this information can be easily garnered from checking out this person in google scholar scopus or web of science also you can actually see from their web page where they are publishing recently that is more important than the fact where they published 15 or 20 years ago that time the person may have been 
a graduate student himself for a postdoc and his or her interest may have also changed over the years. So again, that's something you need to keep in mind. So you also need to figure out various aspects that what are the students publishing, who are the students who are doing different type of work and what are the softwares they are using in terms of the lab and so on. Sometimes you may need to read some of the papers to figure out the different details about what are the equipment the lab has, what is the software they are using, what is their predilection in terms of conferences they go to, who are the people they cite and also who are the people they do not cite because all things are part of the soft power concept as far as academia is concerned. Now the fifth point is going to be about travel and visa. So if you are somebody who is relocating to go to this place, very often you are going to have to do a lot of paperwork and advanced preparation. So you may need to book your tickets. If you are going to a foreign country, you may need to get the visa, you may need to book the flight and so on. And also make sure that you get proper health insurance. And when you are booking the accommodation only thing many people look at is the cost but do not do that also look at the aspects of safety the distance from your institution and so on because in case you are coming to many countries such as the US or even in parts of Europe what happens is that some of the places which are lower in terms of cost in terms of rent also tend to be infested with crime so make sure you stay in a neighborhood where there are people whom you know where the crime chances are less and in some cases it may be okay to share a room with somebody else maybe a phd student or a different postdoc rather than get a one bedroom apartment at a place which is kind of dangerous to stay in if you can find a place where you have relatives or you have friends it is certainly going to be advantage to you now do keep in mind that there are many facebook groups out there which will help you in this relocation process so you can figure out the different apartments, the different grocery stores, the different places you can frequent to eat your food and so on. If you have any food restriction, you need to keep that in mind also, whether you can get the appropriate food where you are staying and whether if you get an apartment, you are allowed to cook or not. So some of these things are going to be very important for you. So these were some of the points I had for you about how to prepare for a postdoc. Like I have mentioned before, it's a combination of hard skills and soft skills. And it's very important to know the PhD supervisor or the postdoc supervisor even before you go to the university. So if the supervisor is somebody who insists that his name goes first in the paper, then you should know this before you go to this person and you should not land up there and have a big argument with him about whose name goes first and so on. So these are certain things you need to decide on before you even embark on this postdoc journey. So I hope this video is useful to you and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.